योग कर्मसु कौशल हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर जतिन विजय भाई रावल आई वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एंड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ लाइफ साइंसेस पद कवि नरसिंह मेहता यूनिवर्सिटी जूनागढ़ and today i am very happy that uh, we'll be sharing some of the content based on the biological control and integrated pest management before starting of the topic i would like to welcome you all uh, in my session uh, though uh, we are meeting on the virtual mode but uh, still uh, we may have uh, the uh, positive talk on the topic biological uh, control and uh, you all of you are the participant from the life sciences variety of streams so i thought that let's have some of the common topic which can be applicable to most of you so before i start i am very much thankful to hrdc uh, gujarat university for providing me this opportunity to talk with you i am also thankful to the coordinators uh, dr jala sir and dr nainesh modi sir for uh, providing me this opportunity so let's get started with today's talk on the biological control and integrated pest management so let's get started with this what is pest an animal that is out of place that is we call as pest and in our country pest management is very much essential and crucial topic because uh, the most of uh, uh, farmers they are dealing with this problem of pest and how to get rid of it right then is this a pest if i ask you this question then it depends where it is fine if it is uh, it is on the garden then it is a pest right so that uh, variety of the insect that you can uh, evaluate based on this aspects so uh, this is a insect as a pest assessment of pest status that we can uh, calculate with help of uh, these calculations fine so we're very you you should uh, know that if the cost of the uh, control measures they are increasing then the damage by the pest then that particular method uh, cannot be much feasible fine so with help of this formula the cost of the control measures the value uh, we can make it out fine what is the yield and what uh, total uh, damage economically uh, damage in terms of uh, the money that how is that damage we can calculate right so we can go to next insect as pest so assessment of the uh, pest status we need to do fine right? uh, that is uh, uh, that uh, varies based on the many uh, uh, different conditions that which pest is there on which plant it is there right so these are the aspects that we are going to uh, deal with so we'll uh, study one by one so we need to assess the uh, status of the pest that what is its uh, level what is its economic threshold that we up to which extent that is uh, harmful or that is damaging right so uh, why insects become pest so uh, otherwise if they are their level of uh, disturbance or their level of harming is below the uh, tolerable condition in that condition we cannot uh, consider them as pest there are harmless insects are the introduced to the areas outside their native range that is one of the things fine then after the vectors of the uh, uh, pathogens that's why they are uh, dangerous fine that uh, dense aggregations of the uh, predictable resources that is that right then continuous cultivation sometime monoculture cultivation then these are the problems so if we get uh, the basics uh, to understand any of the thing we can start with the what why and how so if we just go through the what why and how in this case then we can say what is biological control that uh, uh, to control of the any of the pest with help of biological means and what we means by that this pests can, can be common in the almost everywhere fine right? 
so many times that this uh, protection comes from the other or the strange or the insect side because we have to find out their natural enemies and with help of it we can uh, make it out that how to control that they are the natural enemies of the crop destroying pest fine so enemy is enemy friend so in this way who uses or the studies biological control so the the person who is expert in this thing majorly they are entomologists and entomologists they study their behavior their processes their life cycle their egg stage their larva stage their feeding their mouth part their seasons lifespan season uh, effect so lots many aspects that can be uh, studied fine so this variety of resources i have used uh, to prepare this powerpoint presentation i am thankful to all, all uh, and uh, i have acknowledged them that the variety of resources I've used. In the footnote I have mentioned, in the references I have mentioned them. When biological control is necessary, when the damage is noticeable and it is, it is becoming out of control. So uh, during this condition, it is very much essential that you should have some control, right? And that's why control is uh, necessary. Where, uh, where is biological control used? So where pests can be found, right? So every habitat, it may be forest, lake, or the far farming lands, or any of the other land. Why is biological control good? Because as we know the uh, effect of the pesticides, uh, we already have are witnessing the diverse effects of the chemical control. So this is one of the uh, solution that we may have. It's good because it is cannot stop major damage uh, for uh, the NAPTA spreading. But you have to be expert on this. Make sure neither one has bad effect. Otherwise, sometimes it happens that, that we have introduced biological agent to control the pest, but in turn it itself uh, then becomes a pest. Fine. So that we have to be careful. And this is the resources for the further. I'm just showing you some of the resources that uh, lots many resources are available on net for biological control. So any of you, those who are interested in going much depth, they can go through any of the resources. These are some of the research paper on this. This is the another available content in PDF principles of pest control. So in the very nice way, the topics are given. And this is also another research pro uh, paper progress of the biological control research in India, right? So this document is also easily available from NET. The one who is interested much on this topic, they can talk. They can we can uh, study this in detail. So biological control method of controlling pest using other uh, living organisms. It may be parasites. It may be parasite uh, parasitoids. It may be predators or it may be pathogen. So let's take one by one. So before that, let's understand what is biological control. The use of living organisms to suppress the population of a specific pest organism, making it less abundant or less damaging than it would otherwise be. So we are controlling the uh, pest with help of biological agent. Right? What are natural enemies? Natural enemies are the living organism that kills pest. It is that natural normal food so that we are using. We may we make use of it. Right? Decrease pest reproductive potential any of the means by which we can decrease the reproductive potential so that we can control their number. Complete uh, that is complete with the post uh, uh, organisms for use of their plants. So this can be used their reproduction uh, we can control. So here types of biological to in the variety of ways it can be classified, but one of the this that uh, uh, by the importation by taking it from some other places that is called uh, Classical biological control that importation. This is in which what we are doing. We are importing from other place. <clears throat> so that is importation. Yes, fine. So importation involves the introduction of a pest natural enemies uh, uh, to a, a new uh, local where they do not occur naturally. Means 
from the place where they are not occurring naturally to introduce to the newer place from that. So where they're in the higher number, we find that this is the place where we can introduce so that we can do. Classical biological control is long lasting and inexpensive, but uh, uh, in some cases it works. For the, all the cases, biological control is not the solution for each and every uh, pest problem, but in the majority of them, uh, when it works, you get the better results. And here in the classical biological control, you need to introduce it, uh, the uh, biological agent once. And the uh, biological agent means the organisms that we introduce or uh, with help of which we are controlling. So that is called the biological agent. Importation does not always work. It is usually most effective against the, the some of the pest, fine. And uh, where it is working, so you don't have to constantly control it. Then it is uh, automated. That means the pest itself, it is its food, so they themselves find it and uh, have it. Then augmentation that involves the supplemental release of the natural uh, enemies, supplementing so and uh, boosting the naturally occurring population. So we are boosting the naturally occurring population by periodically a, a supplemental release. So that is that can be asked. Then uh, conservation. Enhance conditions for existing natural enemy survival and reproduction. So that is a conservational. Another aspect if we do in biological control, the use of living organisms. Now, which type of it could be there? It could be predators, it could be parasites, it could be pathogens. And here in the background, you can see the picture of the ladybug beetle. The larval feed on the aphid and other soft bodied insect. And this is how we can uh, control them. Right. So let's uh, talk more on parasites. So they are very specialized, often very small. A trail of bodies can be found, then exit holes or color changes. Here in the example, you can see the healthy aphids, which is having this yellowish color, and parasitized aphids, with the, which you can observe the color change. Attract beneficial insects by not using harmful parasites. So we can how we can attract biological agents by not using pesticides by providing uh, food, nectar, pollen. So any of the thing that which uh, our biological agent like, if you provide them naturally, you can increase their population, fine. Right? Providing shelter to them. These are the, some of the example, ladybird beetle, various species. You can provide food and the variety of plants. If we just compare the other aspect, parasitoids, versus parasites. The parasite, parasites uh, that do not kill, but here parasitoids then kill. Let's first talk about parasites. The parasites live in or on its host. Fine. It obtains nourishment from its host. Parasites that uh, cannot live independently. Uh, relationship uh, here lasts for the lifetime. So this is the uh, some of the examples are given from the Lepidoptera, which is a uh, Parasite of uh, sugar cane. Parasitoids, fine, that kills. That is it's important. Obtain uh, nourishment from the host, but is not needed to survive. Parasitoids, other example you can see in this picture that the wasp is parasiting, it's laying its egg onto the body. So, eggs inside the host or attaching. Here in another picture, it is on the body. Here in first picture, it is inserting inside the body. These are the several other examples. Parasites, then their host. You can see here also some of the parasites. If you can see my cursor. Parasitoids with respect to uh, respect to effect on the host. So uh, the first is idiobionts that host. Development arrested or terminated upon the uh, parasitization. So that is terminated or the arrested, right? So egg parasitoids, that is an example. Then uh, then after another coenobionts in that host continues to develop following the parasitization. So this is another one in parasitoids. As we have said, the wasp or it can be flies, a very narrow host range. This is that limitation. There host ranges are uh, limited. In this diagram, you can see 
how it uh, insert its ovipositor and with help of ovipositor, ovipositor it uh, transfer its egg and that way it is in the body body of the caterpillar and it grows inside the body of caterpillar and eventually when it comes out uh, slowly caterpillar dies here is another picture parasitism may be hyperparasitism or the secondary in which it is common parasites uh, uh, to itself so as a host for another parasitoids offsprings that is one then superparasitism in which host is attacked by more than once by a single species of parasitoids by the single species of parasitoid it is attacked more than once then multiple parasitism when host has been parasitized by more than one species. So that is another one. If you talk more on biological control, it's merits uh, of the parasiti uh, uh, parasitoids. They possess good survival, fine. They require one host to complete the life history that sustain their population at uh, low uh, host levels. If some less number of hosts are there, still they survive. Narrow host range. The demerits, host searching capacity uh, that is strongly reduced by the weather condition. If the weather conditions are not proper, this method may not work properly. Only female search for the host for the egg laying. That is another aspect. So for this method, males don't have a role to play here. Fine. Even best female searches uh, lay and lay few eggs. These are their limitation. Uh, in between, just take the why we are we have to uh, go for the biological control as it is possible because of the chemical control we should be used uh, last uh, resort of with the lowest impact on the natural enemies. So uh, otherwise they are mixing with the food and it is affecting the human health. That's why uh, we have to go for the second option. And another aspect of pesticide that is on biological control, if you think or compare uh, some of the aspect in this. In this example, uh, this is the before condition wherein the ladybug beetle, which is uh, shown in the bright red and 18 number, say for example, and these are our pest. So if we uh, spray pesticide, then in this, in that case, we can kill the pest. So our goal is achieved at as as first instance, but here the beneficial insect also get uh, killed and eventually uh, their reproduction rate is lower of beneficial insect, but the pest they they reproduce at very high rate. So as a result, you again have more pest and the biological controller or our helpful organisms, their numbers uh, cannot uh, grow as faster as the pest. So that is also under indirect effect. So other uh, predators in general, the predators are larger, faster, more aggressive and present in the relatively fewer numbers than their their prey. These are the uh, assertion bug and there are many bugs, fine. Then big eyed bugs, they are also raised commercially. So they are raised commercially, increase in number and they have we, we should know their whole life cycle. We and then it can be sell and it can be introduced into the newer place as a biological control agent. Predator can kill large number of prey. They are generalist rather than specialist. So whichever comes, they are not specialized about selective food. So whatever comes, they are generalized. They are social creatures, wasp and ants. Predators are free living organisms that feed throughout their life on the other animals and then kill the prey. So here our purpose is solved. Larger than the prey, immature and adult, the species they feed on uh, the larva, the egg and the adult one. These are the, some of the examples of predators. You can see spiders, some of the wasp species, mites, so they kill. Then biological control agents, they are the predators, fine. Uh, ladybird beaker, beetles, the, the uh, various predators of aphids and we'll also consume mites, the scale insects, caterpillars, even dragonflies. You might be aware dragonflies are also very important predator and biological control agent to control the number of mosquitoes. 
ladybird beetle at the different stages feeding on different larva of aphids. So other aspect if we discuss that pathogens that post population uh, this management uh, uh, pest population management through the disease causing microorganisms it can be bacteria viruses fungi nematodes so that also we can say with the help of pathogens we are supposed to control here the by all the means we are supposed to control the pest population as we can infected larva that viral fluid pathogens naturally occurring insect uh, diseases bacteria fungi viruses all bacteria it is primary pay uh, caterpillars beetles and flies can be controlled and after they consume uh, the, the larval the stop feeding that become blimp and shrunken so here we can control the different stage. with help of viruses also we can do with help of uh, fungus Caterpillars, flies, uh, then after uh, white flies can control the, because of its effect that they will become lethargic, the swollen, or uh, then after re uh, reduced feeding and fungus covered. So here we can control nematodes species can also be used. If we see some of the techniques in biological control, then classical as we talk, right? Augmentative and conservative. If we go in detail on that, that involves the introduction of pest natural enemies to a new location where they do not occur naturally. So that we have introduced. So in this, it could be mass releasing and the production. Inoculative release involves a release of small number of uh, number and may be made uh, uh, then after infrequently as once the once a year or re-establishment you have to have monitor on that and as per the requirement you can release inundative release in that involves the mass release of the natural enemies uh, at the frequent intervals and which can suppress the pest population. This is conservation biological control that uh, protection from the pesticides that avoidance of the harmful uh, cultural practices that maintenance of the biodiversity supply of food and shelter for uh, this are the we can do. Reproductive control. These are the different methods which can, we can stop them reproducing and we can stop their population. Control of insect pests by the lowering their reproductive potential or make them weak so they cannot reproduce. These are the different methods. The sterilization is one of them. And before the sterilization, you can have radiation, chemo sterilization, or another uh, genetic uh, tactics can also be used. So it's for the radiation in this method, the male, uh, the insect population that is exposed to the high energy radiation. And as I said, that uh, if they produce eggs, then a proper zygote is not formed. If the egg is there, it is not fertile. So there are again pre-zygotic, post-zygotic mortality is there. So uh, for any of the means, the purpose is their population should be uh, controlled and reduced. Chemo sterilization, fine. In this matter, certain chemicals are used for sterilizing insects. Chemo sterilization. Then genetic techniques, inherited uh, sterility then condition of the lethal mutations, behavioral changes, even in some of the cases, courtship, and that can also be affected. Hybrid sterility, so many techniques that can be used. Advantages of biological control, that high level of control at low cost, uh, that is another aspect. Then in that, once we have the initial investment, we don't have to invest much, right? Then uh, another another benefit is that uh, they are natural remains. If they reproduce rapidly, then we can, we don't need to reintroduce. And if they reproduce at the low level, in that case, we need to introduce. And uh, in other chemical method, we have to find out the pest and on that we have to apply the mechanical or 
uh, cultural or the chemical pesticide. But here, uh, like it is a small robot which we are working for us. So it itself will find out the pest. And it can also survive the low cost densities. Some of the disadvantages are also there, not effective against the direct pest. Some of them that is not directly effective against all the pest. And in this method, some level of damage will occur because it takes time. So some level of damage that is occur. Must be implemented over large areas. Uh, Sometimes it takes more time to be effective. So these are the some of the disadvantages. This was the source from that. Some of the content I have taken. This is the source for it. Uh, this is commercial biological control. So you can go in detail for this uh, website for that. IPM integrated pest management Florida this website and this uh, presentation is of the uh, Norman so you can get a glimpse of it. Of all known species uh, insect species only the, this person very less number of them are actually pest. And here this is the example of commercial uh, biological control. So in which this is some of the history that uh, in the what uh, happened at which years farming happened. Trichogramma. Entomophaga. Then Coppart established. Different organization in vitro production of the nematodes. White fly parasites are developed. 1991 biological science and technology. So these are different uh, histories in that. And further details can also be uh, gathered from this. Milestones in commercial commercialization of biological control. Classical and new tools and methods that can be used. Production of sterile insect and then release them into nature and have them reproduction. So as an end, we can control that. Rearing of the, uh, then after phytophagus, arthropod can be there. Some commercial natural enemies, here it is there, you can see. Multicellular invertebrates, they are used as natural enemies that can be nematodes, that can be arachnids, that can be insects, so the spiders and that. Heteroptera, neuroptera, coleoptera, beetles, even diptera, they are the natural enemies of pests. Uh, uh, some other hymenoptera. Wasps. So that can be used as control. So the types of insect rearing system. So here, bristle brittle or uh, the mad flies. So that commercially that has to be reared. This has to be managed. We have to study their biology. We have to study their uh, egg structure, larva. Then the pupa if it is their adult, their mouth part, their favoring seasons, their preference of food, their preference of pest. And their um, way of mechanism of handling it and having it all these aspects, their periodical uh, production on large colony. We are not talking about the production of the machine or goods or some of the thing. We are talking about the production of live creatures. If it is insect, if it is biological control, we have to see that it is stored properly and then in the season in which it is required, it should be available. It should be live. It should be ready for the action. Colonized insects, it's there. Appropriate biotypes can be there. Rear, rearing proficiency is important. Behavior of genetic isolation is there. Strain replacement. These are the many aspects that we have to uh, consider. Their size, fecundity, what is their oviposition, egg hatching. Do they have dormancy? Their adult behavior. 
then again the numbers measurements the statistics standard deviation measured parameter sample number these are the some of the examples World markets for the natural enemies versus pesticides, you can see what the data says. So the arthropod, that is, and biological control versus chemical uh, pesticides, investment versus uh, return. So red, that is investment, and how much you get as a return. So in the biological control, return is more, but only condition as we talk when it works. Technology transfer for the uh, publicly funded biological control products, the government institutions, feasibility study, appropriation, product development, and then client group given to the client. Public domain, again, this is the finance, financing, product development, patenting, market analysis, financing. Requirement for the commercialization. Research teams versus solo it could be their financial support. So these are the technical aspects. A new product development, uh, cumulative number of species that is increased as per the this 1970. Now you can see there is increase in the so there are new species of insects. They are developed new arthropods are uh, deputed for this section. These are the some of the example. White flies, these are the species. There are lots many challenges as well in this because in many a time it is case specific and we cannot go right now in detail. Fine. So these are the some of the topic that we have tried to deal with. Some other aspects, if we go to the some other aspect, integrated pest management. Uh, because we have the very uh, effect of insecticides. That is, you all are very much learned and very much aware with what the condition is today because of pesticides. Even it is biomagnification, it has uh, increased. And as it go to from one level to another, from primary to secondary to tertiary, it magnifies and that creates a problem. Even insecticide resistance is also another issue. So many of the insects are now resistant to the particular pesticide, so they are no more effective or less effective. Even multiple resistance is there. And resistance that is passed on to the next generation, so they will be, become more prone uh, to the pesticides. In short, they will not having any effect of the pesticide. And on the contrary, the biological agent, our beneficial insects, our friends, we can say they will they will be killed. So here what is required is integrated pest management, right? So integrated pest management, we are gathering the uh, knowledge of all other aspects, right? So integrated uh, pest management system is designed for the six. Uh, these are the basic uh, components One of that uh, exact acceptable pest level. Some of the pest level is acceptable. If they are not harming very much, then it is fine. Fine. Then preventive cultural uh, practices. So that is preventive to prevent cultural practices. Right. Then monitoring, constant monitoring is required. Then mechanical controls, barriers, trap like mosquito net, the net. So there are, we'll go in details. Biological control that we go on in detail. Then responsible use of pesticide if chemical we need to use. Sometimes there isn't any option. I'm not advocating biological control, but we are discussing the major aspect. And in some cases, there isn't any alternative to chemical control. We need to spray farmers, uh, but uh, here uh, their judicial use should be there. If it is uh, said it is in, in the instruction, it is that in the 5 ml in one liter, but in farmers, sometimes they, they don't follow that instruction. So then create the problem. Chemical control, you are very much aware. So it can be stomach poison, it can be contact poison, it can be delivered to the mouth, 
it can be through the trachea it could be through the uh, uh, cuticle so this is how chemical control works for the paste alkaloids it could be there erythrins it could be there so different forms ddt other chemical insecticide modes of application solution form it may be fumigants it can be its balls are prepared it could be dust are prepared it could be sprayed in gaseous form it could be sprayed so in the variety of forms we are uh, using it insect growth regulator igr that is also there that inhibit and insects growth so that is also important igrs that uh, can be uh, introduced that is a chemical but it uh, growth sometime we just uh, try to have uh, some of the stages are there egg larva pupa adult but because of the hormonal effect and uh, we have transformed it uh, the it will caterpillar will enter into pupa stage but pupa from that the pupa to adult transformation we can hurdle so that it will remain in pupa stage and if it is in the pupa stage we don't have any problem it stays there and then the decompose fine so these are the let, lots many uh, new methodologies are involved your goal is reduction not elimination because 100% uh, it is out of uh, uh, control that 100% we can uh, control, but we can reduce. So here there are different types of biological controls that we got in detail. Periodic release, inoculation. Arthropod are the natural enemies, predators as we discussed, spiders that many predators uh, that can be used, even parasites, parasitoids can be used. Even microbial control that can be done with help of nematodes. It may be fungi, maybe viruses with, with help of bacteria. BT, you are well aware with that, right? So after the treatment of uh, BT, uh, that, that is that found distasteful or if it is ingested in small quantity it will stop eating and if it is in the high quantity it may die so we can uh, have the uh, in the pest resistant variety even plant itself has the mechanism for its resistance antibiosis plant negatively effect on the biology of the insect it is there antixenosis uh, then plant uh, deters its insect feeding due to the being a, a poor host that can be there some and some tolerance that some part is being eaten that will grow it again and damage can be recovered insect resistance variety that we have just talked some corn cotton that tobacco tomato potato many varieties there are uh, insect resistant now these are the, some of the examples. I would like to acknowledge the uh, Erika Jenkins for this. And it is the, this uh, university. Uh, the pictures they have given some of the example. Vast larva coming out of the caterpillar. In the initial talk we said that during in, into the body of the caterpillar, wasp used to insert its eggs. And from uh, that egg, uh, this wasp larva comes out. So here, uh, the caterpillar body is used, right? And from that, the wasp is there. The caterpillar eventually not getting any benefit. But caterpillar, if it is a pest, then we have the measurement. So these are the very variety of examples. Long leg fly with a captured leaf hopper. So leaf hopper. These are the examples of biological control. Wasp coming out of the aphid bodies. So smaller wasp, they are coming out from the aphid bodies. Wasp pupae on the caterpillar. These are pupa stage of wasp, as you are well aware, egg, larva, pupa. So it is pupa stage of cat of uh, on a caterpillar. So caterpillar is body is used throughout. There are many interesting videos on this. Crow beetles that it is eating a maggot. The maggot is being eaten. Again, this is the, the this one on the top that is affected with virus. Clover worm infected with the fungus. 
a tiny wasp injects egg into the plant a bug nymph the plant bug nymph in the light green color so it is injecting a fly infected with the fungus so that is microbial control scorpion eating a uh, cricket house cricket it is having biting and chewing mouth part where the mandibles are also strong uh, they have different mouth part lesina gilia palpiger palpifer cardo type prementum mentum submentum and with help of it it is biting and chewing so it cuts off and it is a serious pest uh, but with help of uh, the scorpion biological agent or any such which controls it so that is our uh, we can get a benefit out of it japanese uh, this beetle larva grub uh, that is a milky uh, disease caused by the bacteria spider eating an insect that you are well aware is one of the biological page agent so these are the lots many examples of the biological control wasp leg is inside uh, this uh, moth caterpillar big eyed bug and it controls white fly physical control is also that the as you can have plantation indoors fences trap so these are the example of uh, some of the cultural control as well that we are going in detail up to 5 minutes crop pest okay there a medical uh, pest or uh, uh, you can remove them livestock this is the example in which livestock is passed through uh, this uh, treatment treated water so that you can get rid of parasite pest on that even this are also there are variety of means to control that even pheromones we can say there are attractants are there uh, sterilization that we talk about so attractants you collect them attract them at particular place and then kill them right sex pheromones can be used uh, with the great uh, success main use of uh, pheromones that is monitoring mass trapping for the mass trapping even sex attractants they come in the mass and then you trap Mating disruptions that can be one. These are the some other example. Set set fly. These are the references from where we have content uh, taken the content. And these are the slide by slide reference that which slide that we have taken content from where. And then if we talk about the some integrated pest management, so this combination of all the means of the uh, so that means that is. careful consideration of all available pest control techniques and the subsequent uh, integration of all this approach it can be biological it could be mechanical it can be chemical it may be cultural right to uh, what is our purpose that is we have to minimize the risk to humans and the uh, animal health as well right so we the our target is healthy crop integrated pest management is coordinated use of pest and environmental information and available pest control methods so we, whatever the earlier scientists did and they found the successful uh, results so we consider them and use it all together to prevent unacceptable level of the pest damage by the most economical means right least possible hazard to people property and environment so it is like like a good music is there is a sum total of all the instrument they are playing in the different frequency but as a result we get good music so in the different frequency different means of uh, control it may be biological chemical physical cultural uh, any of but that as a result this is integrated while integrated pest management these are the different means caging uh, mouth balls even you have this uh, mosquito net so some for the plant uh, uh, chores that is like uh, grasshoppers beetle which is having biting and chewing mouth part aphids it have the specific management strategies leaf spores that the uh, then after root uh, the this for more information you can uh, have a uh, look on this website biocontrol.ifas these are the some other uh, readings now let's uh, have a very fast uh, case study 
for integrated pest management. Fine. So this from that site, I have taken this content and photograph. So in, that is an example of the, of the integrated uh, pest management. Fine. So here it is case of his bad bug. Fine. Bad bugs. There is a case study we have taken. Integrated pest management. Increase the resistance to the current insecticide. It is not having any response by the current insecticide. If you spray, then also cannot kill those some of them. Exposure to the residents uh, to the insecticides. Sustainable solution we don't have. Where do they come from and why the problem is so severe? They are there in the furniture. They come from the international traveler even pass through the local community. Why are the problems so severe? Important points. The lay three to five eggs a day. Total days from the egg to adult is uh, 30. And that also affect by the temperature. Molds, the demolting stage. This is first mold, second mold, third and fourth. Nymph to adult. Nymph is a structure in which it is resembling the adult but it is smaller in size and then it grows and convert into adult. It, that is a nymph stage in very short. I try to explain. How small they are. This is their size in star. In star is also the uh, first in star, second in star. That is like developmental stage. Eggs are one to two mm. Temperature, but above uh, this temperature they will die. So here the uh, case study what they try to do equipment for heat treatment. This is not possible for the all the cases, but this is one of the method. This that, that's why I have taken one of the case study. Temperature monitors are there. These are the all the room setup and all the arrangement what is required room setup that all that they try to do in the uh, compact form. Live bed bugs. Data logger, thermometer, sensor, placement in the cabinet. Some are there as a sample, as you are well aware that we are putting control. So that is like some of the, the captured we already have that is kept as a control. Placement for fans and heaters. So the, the here plan is to uh, increase the temperature. Logging together, then chilling. Then again from the temperature, now it is sealed this much area. So that is called heat chamber. So in the heat chamber, this is the monitor that you can observe the initial temperature. Under mattresses and other different places under pillow. Then that as they started, the temperature will rise. Uh, we have another topic to cover, so I will go fast. Bed bugs that is died as a result. These are the equipments. So this is one of the case study in integrated pest management. Fine. Prevention, cultural uh, then practices, biological methods, physical, chemical. Some of the uh, cultural method we can just go into details. Use of pesticides, uh, this crop rotation. Right? Uh, then uh, these are the different methods. One by one, we will go uh, tilling. These are the cultural methods. Fine. Right? So in the integrated pest management, all methods are together. In tilling, you are all familiar with this. Tilling at the help of it so that uh, the downwards insect will come up. Even birds and that can go. Even temperature so that can be killed. That is one method. Clean seed. So when we are sowing the seeds, it should be clean. Nowadays, processed seeds are there, so they are. We should see that they are clean, not infected, not having egg of previous stage. So with that, that can be done. Cultural control. Another aspect: irrigation by flooding of flooding a large number of insects that prevent the soil and can be. And then after drone or the exposed to the natural enemies. Another aspect is exposed to the natural enemies. Another manuring, providing, putting the fertilizer uh, in the right proportion, make the plant healthy and having the vigorous growth. So no chance for the uh, for the insect. Cultural control, the removal of all underside plants. The clean culture, 
so like like weed we are removing so likewise time of sowing at the right time by adjusting the time of sowing and the harvesting crops can be uh, saved from the infestation so by sowing at the right time pruning and thinning sometimes it is observed that that the having the spread of pest from one plant to another that will grow from one branch to another if you do pruning and thinning then the one plant is not in the physical contact with the other plant in that case the, the some of the pest will jump from one to another that, that can be uh, stopped trap crops so we meaningfully we in this picture you can see the sidewise the trap crop okra is one of the trap crop form for cotton in the cotton cultivation if you plant okra it is observed that some of the pests will like okra more than the cotton so here the purpose is to save with cotton at the cost of okra so okra can be used can be consumed and that is for the pest only so you eat this so that we can save cotton so these are there are many many multiple uh, trap crops which can be used for the purpose sowing of resistant uh, varieties so here the sowing of the resistant variety you can use that we talked crop rotation that is also very common so one time you have groundnut and time you have cotton so likewise our uh, the, the crop rotation so that the pest of groundnut cannot affect the uh, to the uh, cotton there are some common pests which are, but in general the other pests we can avoid Destruction of crop residues. Sometimes the egg stage or the remainings or the leaf or dead leaf uh, from that other uh, will go to the next year. So that if you uh, destroy all the crop residues, then there are less chances. Fine. Right? Sugar can maize is observed. Physical control is there. Hot or temperature wise, you can uh, control. Fine. Right? These are the different methods application for the physical control. physical control for the moisture and control light traps so light and handling that you can control large number of them and have control over it because that is the natural tendency of the pest that they attract to the light so they can control fine <clears throat> so most of the thing that we have tried to cover still some points are there but i think we don't have much time uh, we have uh, tried to cover most of the portions. Cultural control. Chemical control, we have taken a bit of it, but biological control we can discuss in the detail and some uh, predators are there, some pathogens are there, some microorganisms are there. With the help of it, we can control. And this uh, we have just uh, gone through uh, some of the aspects. So Tilling of that, cultural control, clean seed is there, irrigation, right? Then uh, manuring, clean culture, time of sowing, prep crops. So all this we can uh, discuss as per the time uh, limit. Uh, I'll miss one of the thing. If we are all together, in that case, we have some interactions. You may have questions and I can answer. But in this mode, if you have some, you can email. In the first slide, I've just given my email address. Uh, you can email. I'd be happy to answer your uh, queries. Otherwise, uh, I'm very happy that on the, this virtual mode, I got this chance to interact with you uh, with all of you learned people in the field of life sciences. Uh, thank you all. So we uh, conclude our lecture uh, at this virtual mode. Uh, thank you, HRDC. Thank you, Jala sir, Nines Modi sir. Uh, we'll just wind up. Thank you.